Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. That's me. It's Alex. And this, of course, is the Ramble. Yep. Well, there, yeah. There she is. That's Lori Thompson. Hey, Lori. How you doing, kiddo? Hello. I am good as we travel, as we slide into autumn. Uh, slide. Literally slide into autumn. Anyway, uh, here we are. How you doing? I've been doing good. We're going up. We're coming to New York. So I want to see you if we can work it out. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it's upstate. We're upstate. But um, yet my uh, husband's daughter, who I just call my daughter now, since I am barren, <laughs> he, uh, she lives up there. So we're going to a little place called Rocky Point, which is big. on It's very quaint little place. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so uh, and we'll be in the New York area. It's like, I have friends in New York. And so... We're gonna we're gonna make every attempt to see you if you're up for that. Oh, of course, of okay. course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We have a lot of people visiting us now lately. All yeah, of now a they, sudden. Now they heard you came into that windfall. Yeah, hoping, right, least, right. Since I came yeah. into the windfall. Yeah. yeah, they're looking for like pillowcases full of Benjamins. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. So you know, we're, we're just windfalling it. <laughs> Which is better than zip lining it. Yeah. So that well. means that well, we're place. taking our first trip. We're going to Paris for five days because yeah. Mar Marjorie wants to go to Paris for five days for her birthday. So I figured, okay, fine. That'll be fun. Oh, yeah. A, yeah. Yeah. That's a good, old, good old, uh, way to initiate your new flush stuff. I love, I love that city. You know, it, is. Uh, it's a it does kind of live up to it. It's yeah. just, it, it's the only city I know that people say is so wonderful and it lives up to that reputation. Yeah. But you know what other town I loved? I love Barcelona. Oh, Barcelona. Have you been to Prague? No. Oh, Ben, you like Prague. It reminded me of when we were, all the fun we had in Barcelona. It's a good town. It's one of those good towns. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but uh, Barcelona was terrific. We really enjoyed ourselves there. It was perfect, and we knew that it was going to be on its best behavior because they clean up so well for the Olympics. Well, you, you know, when we went there, I told you that you're going to be disappointed in this city because it's really a mess, you yeah. know? And the city I had met was this gray depressed city this is while franco was still alive okay yeah. once franco died because they're a basque uh city mm -hmm. uh they immediately went out and said we want to get the olympics here And when they said okay we'll take the olympics there they cleaned up the whole city they dredged the whole harbor everything right and made it in all the fountains were working again. And this gray city that I had seen before that I told you, well, you know, you're going to be a little disappointed in Barcelona. I don't know why they're doing it in Barcelona. They completely, you know, fixed the Renovate. place up. They renovated, they repaired, they re, yeah. Um, they were uh, shining bright like a diamond. The only place I know you can go that it, on the hill, there's this beautiful a uh, cathedral called Tipidabo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tipidabo. That was and uh, Tipidabo. And uh, it, it is the only cathedral of that magnificence that had a Ferris wheel next to it. <laughs> yeah. Well, what is this Ferris wheel explosion that's hitting all the major cities? No, no. Cities? They, apparently, apparently, they turned it into an amusement park. <laughs> It, you know, save your soul, take a roller coaster ride. It all ties in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and when we were we were walking up around there, and that's where we saw uh, uh, O.J. Simpson. Yeah. Yep, it is. And then we went to. I think the thing that made that trip for me is we then went to a beef fest, yeah. and you had been there, so you were a great tour guide, and you had all these great stories about how different it was in the '70s 
and uh, you know how it was. Didn't they have some drug that were basically quaaludes? Uh, Dormadinas. 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 Yeah, do they still sell those? You would I'm buy sure. them in a little box of 10 for like 50 cents. Oh, my. And they were half a dose of quaalude. Yeah, and could you have a crackdown on that, or can you still... You, I knew people who brought in hundreds of boxes of Dormadinas into the country. Yeah. And, I would... and when they were asked why they had so many boxes of these little pills, right, which were obviously yeah. over-the-counter in, in Spain, yeah. uh, they, the reply you would get from the people was, well, I really have trouble sleeping, and these things really work. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and then if they said, well, these are like quaaludes, well, I got them in a country that sold them to me directly, you know. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. I didn't think there was anything wrong with them. I just asked for something for sleep, you know. Yeah. I go in and say, Porsuenio, you know. <laughs> and they applied. In fact, that was the first Spanish term I ever learned was Porsuenio. So I could walk into a, uh, a place, and I bought tons of these things. Yeah. And then I went to Ibiza itself. That was in Barcelona, and I went, and, uh, no, in uh, Madrid. And then I went to uh, Ibiza, and I left them with them. I, I didn't want to take them back to the United States with me. I didn't want to take the chance. Yeah, th that's it. You know, I veer on the side of, of caution or not well, not landing in a Spanish prison. That's what I veer on the side of. And yeah. uh, that just, of course, I, don't, I leave such a clean-cut life these days. You know, I don't really have anything... You know how your stomach used to tighten when you get to uh, when you get to the security thing when you're yeah, traveling. Yeah, well, I'm always nervous anyway when I go through through uh, 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 you know uh, customs. Uh, well, you can get this uh, TSA clearance. You know we have it, and it does save you some hassle, not all hassle, and it's kind of a hassle. Yeah, we we <laughs> we have all the papers worked out for it. We just haven't. Uh, we have you have to go in and do an interview. Yeah, you do. And we did that. And uh, I don't know, we didn't set off any alarm bells. So and then it was several months later. I don't know how rigorous the vetting is. But uh, yeah, we that's helped some. But yeah. man, it's becoming airports are just becoming like stockyards. They're just a, a cattle, you know, just a, a, a cattle. Yeah, I remember experience. when flying used to really be fancy. Yeah. yeah like you, you got dressed fly. up. You got dressed up to fly. Sure, yeah. And now it's just, I mean, you, you feel like, although Delta, I've got to say, does serve a nice little chicken pasta entree at dinner time. And they give you, uh, it's, it's of the airline meals, the best one I've had, except for like first class to Japan. Well, we're flying, uh, we're flying, what is it, premium uh, yeah. coach, premium tourist or whatever. That means you get the honey roasted nuts. Well, you get yeah. the honey roasted nuts with that. You get more leg room is what it is. Yeah, which is nice. But you know what I noticed? We got a bill for it and, and the flight was like I don't know, $700 or something like that round trip. Uh -huh. But but there's a $800 international charge. What? Yes. That's bogus. Well, they are, they're doing a lot of destination fees, which get you nothing. It's something I even got it when I went to San Francisco. It's $25 a day, and you're like, well, what's that for? It's just a destination fee. I go, well, I'm already at the destination, so <laughs> knock that fee off. I, I, I don't understand it. I never saw a fee like that before, but the fee for the uh, international travel or something or whatever uh, was more than... Uh, uh, what do you call it? More than uh, the actual the flight, flight itself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have not, we have not encountered that, but we also have it. You know, my my uh, husband is so savvy on that. I mean, like, he knows as much as a travel agent, yeah. although we do do the travel agent. Yeah, so that's nice. It's nice to have someone in your twosome that is really well, wait, good wait at that. I got it right here, right here. Wait a minute. Yeah. Okay, so you got the uh, civil uh, aviation service fee. That was like five dollars and sixty cents. Okay. U.S. transportation tax was forty-four dollars. Okay. 
Okay. Airfare, $775. Okay. International surcharge, $850. And that's many. Don't they even give you some explanation of it, what it covers? I have no, under, uh, no idea what that is. Then we get the French airport tax, the France air passenger solidarity tax. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see here. What other things do we have? Uh, France Solidarity tax twice. France Passenger Service Charge, $35. But it's that, uh, that international surcharge. I don't understand. That, yeah, maybe check into that with someone, because that sounds like a racket. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't make sense. I'm going to have my wife go check that out. By the way, yeah. my wife says for me to say hello. Oh, good, and tell her a big hug, hello, because you you hit the jackpot when you got this wife. You, really? You did good. Oh, yeah. Really? I'm still oh. looking for another one. I don't know what the... Uh... <laughs> well, you were like the only um, success story, and I know a lot of people, but I don't think they ever met on, what, J-Date? Was that where you guys met? Yeah. J-Date? And uh, you guys, just to me, you know, you can feel a comfort with a couple... When you're visiting with them and yeah. hanging with them for a while, you guys just seem to have it. Well, we seem to, we, you know, we, I think at our age, we're just reser uh, resolved to the idea that, well, this is it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> this is it. Yeah. Well, well, you know, why make an issue of anything? Oops, wait That's a minute. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get myself more in the picture here. Say that. Oh, I, there you and are. And I, went, I went too low and I got... Uh, I got the top of my green screen came down. Yeah, now we got the full frontal, Alex Bennett. Yeah, now we got the full frontal. No, but, <laughs> uh, you know, so whatever. You know. Yeah, but I'd check into that. See, now all I, <laughs> Rick, I mean, if there's like a $25 charge he doesn't understand, he will research it until he's talked to 10 people and gotten all their names. But, which yeah. is, you know, he enjoys that kind of stuff. But, you know, without that charge, you know, I mean, like the total charge for per, per, for both of us flying round trip is $3,532. That's not bad. Yeah, but if we didn't have that $850 a piece, you know, so I don't get it. You know. It'd be a lot more reasonable. Yeah, um, it's just the, the airline industry seems to be at one point, at one point, from one angle, it seems to be so regulated. On another, the one affecting us, Joe, Joe and Jill Consumer, it doesn't seem to be regulated at all. What they can charge, you know, what they can do and get away with. And it, I don't quite understand it. I think that their priorities could be. I've flown to Europe, I don't know how many times in my lifetime, and I've never paid that. An no. An international sur sur surcharge. No. And I see, and traveling, and we travel a lot, and the airport has become the most beleaguering component of a trip to Europe. Because you're just, and then you wait in line to get in other lines. And so I think anybody who reinvents that, that whole airport experience, is going to zoom to the top. Of the tourism darling. Well, is that the fault of the United States and the government, or is that the fault of uh, the uh, airlines? Well, I don't know, but whoever transportation secretary should look into that and do us some good. Well, that's Pete Buttigieg. I love Pete. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think he'll probably, uh, yeah, he'll probably end up, we've, we've not seen the last of him in a, in a greater position. Oh, I don't no. know if it's oh, secret. Yeah, whether he runs for something or whatever, he's, you know. Yeah. yeah. He, yeah. he just seems so genuine. Yeah. That's what I like about it. So how's the weather down there? It's good, but it is starting to get cooler. Um, and you can, like, walk out. I do the walkout test in the morning. And if I open the, the door to the deck and go, ooh, I know that, I, I know that the fall is impending. But if it's just kind of gradual, it's better. Yeah. Because it, it gets into the 30s here because we're the northernmost part of Florida, the Panhandle right. part. Right, right. And once in a while in the 20s, but rarely. 
Yeah. yeah. Right. So you get a chance to wear your cool jacket. So last week you couldn't, we couldn't do this because you were working. Yes, I was. I do some stuff. Usually it's just weekend stuff uh, to keep me busy and you know to keep me from uh, you know knocking over your convenience stores out of sheer boredom. Yeah. And I do a, a weekend shift for them. Yeah. But then the afternoon man went on vacation and said, "Would you be interested in doing this?" I said, yeah, that'd be kind of fun to just get back in the rhythm of it. Yeah. You know, the only thing is when you're doing someone else's show, I try to pay very much respect to the way they run their show. Right. So there's a little anxiety. You're not only worried about doing an interesting show, you have to worry about, you know, this is the right yeah, place. Let me, let me ask you, though, where you're working, which is probably a smaller station, right? Oh, yeah. Are they doing station. it? Are they there for the whole shift? Well, words. we can be if we want. There's tracking, the tracking option, but we can be there for the whole shift if we want. So did you track these shows or did you? I tracked most of them. I did a few things live. Mm -hmm. And I see, it doesn't really matter because I grew up on live radio. You know, I mean, I was, you were there. If you worked two to seven, you were there for five hours, two to seven. So, and if you. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. If you were doing one of those hot hit formats where you talk between every single song, it was exhausting. You got off that air, and you felt like you'd run a marathon. Yeah, I remember the days when I talked after every record. Yeah, me too. And overnight, to keep that energy going, if you ever did an overnight shift, you feel like, you know, you want to sleep for about a day and a half when you get off, because it's, it's to be that upbeat and energetic, I don't you know, know. I don't know. I was always able to go that. I can't, I don't think I can do it anymore. I uh, I have a friend who has a, a national radio show, and uh -huh. he does it on Sunday nights, and it's uh, it's three hours, four hours, and he asked me to do it recently, and I've done it before, but he asked me to do it recently, and I turned him down. I said I don't know if I have the strength anymore to do four hours or three hours or however long his shift was. Yeah, said, it's I, nice I, to have the option of tracking. I said, well, I don't know if I, if I, if uh, among other things, not that, uh, well, that I have the strength to do it, but also uh, that I have enough to say anymore. Yeah, so that's why I read constantly. And I mean, I even make notes and get, just to give myself things. Well, when I, when I was doing a talk show, which this was that I was going to be doing, uh, I uh, I always related to what was going on in my life outside the studio. You know, I talk about something that happened here, or happened there. We yeah. don't do anything anymore. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't, I don't have little adventures doing this or little adventures doing that. But you have been a just a cornucopia of stories from all your years in radio. You know, and uh, so that's what, that's as interesting as anything. It's learning to uh, mine your past for some things that are still relevant. Well, I did a series of podcasts. There are 60 of them. If anybody's interested, you can find them on GabNet Live called Life in the Passing Lane, which is my yeah. entire life in 60 half-hour chapters. Oh, fun. Fun. I like talking with your mom about when you were a kid. Yeah, well, it starts out with me as a kid, and then it gets me into radio, and then it gets me into a lot of those adventures, and, you know, the whole John Lennon period, and stuff like that, you know. Yeah, and you, one of your first jobs was in Klamath Falls, Oregon. <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it was. No, actually, where did I go? Where was the first place I went? Was it the first place I ever went? Yeah, I think I got the job in Klamath Falls, Oregon. That I, I worked at a local radio station in Marin County uh, called ATIM. K, 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 ATIM, yeah. Uh, st stood for This Is Marin. Anyway, <laughs> uh, and, and then when I, uh, uh, let's see here, before I got into the military, yeah, I, I went to uh, Klamath Falls, Oregon because my father knew somebody or knew somebody or knew some oh no 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 that was not my first job my first job after that was reno nevada oh man and, that's and, pretty and, that's a larger market and i did my show out of a casino now was that 
trip well, there was, a, was, there was a little problem. I was 19 at the time. Ah, uh, busted. Yeah. Wait a minute. Well, it wasn't busted. I told them they knew I was 19, but they said, if you come to the studio, they have to have somebody uh, take you up to the studio, which was Genius, in the it was, a, it was a booth in the casino, but they I could go up there. Yeah. I wasn't near the machines or anything like that. So we they said, actually had huh? to have a guard take me up. And they'd have to, they, they had to have two guards take me to the bathroom. <laughs> There'd be two guys, one on either side of me while I'm trying to take a leak. Couldn't you set up like, you know, a system in the studio where you could... I don't know, get a big gulp. No, 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 gulp. no, yeah, no, no. So I would, but those were the days when I was young, I could hold it for at least, I think I hold it for three hours. But anyway, I would go in and do the show, and uh, then I called the guards, and they come pick me up and take, boot me out the front door. You know? <laughs> Got to make a urine run. Yeah, but yeah. that didn't last that long because the station didn't like the idea of having to you know, go through all of that to get me on the air. So yeah. so I was yeah. out of work, and then I, I think my father found another job through somebody else mm -hmm. who, like, owned a station in Klamath Falls, Oregon. I can't remember exactly how I got that, but I think my father had something to do with that. Yeah, it's usually a friend of a friend or a friend of the family. Yeah. Like, with me, it was my, the husband of my high school uh, guidance counselor, who I love, Helen yeah. Beach. Well, yeah, and so, yeah. yeah, and but, I, and I had gone down to college and gotten the radio, and I came up on a on vacation to my hometown, and went out to see him. And he, can I do anything? You know, I'll rip copy whatever you well, want. Well, how I he described said, how I described uh, um, uh, Klamath Falls was it wasn't the middle of nowhere, but you could see it from there. Well, see, you know, that's a leg up. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I went to work at Klamath Falls, Oregon. And um, uh, that was an invention in and of itself. Um, but the, be the, the best part about it was it was halfway between San Francisco and, like, uh, Seattle. And, oh, so, and so when there were people touring, musicians touring, uh -huh. they, they would pass through Klamath Falls. And as long as they were passing through, because it was halfway, they figured they'd spend the night there and do a gig, just give them another gig they could do. So I saw some of the greatest acts in the world coming through Klamath Falls, Oregon. Yeah. Well, that's the same way with Bloomington, Illinois. Mm -hmm. We were halfway between Chicago and St. Louis. And they had to... <laughs> Good yeah, it's the, as long as we, we'll pick up a gig in there, as long as we're going through it, why just go through it or spend the night there and not make some bucks out of it? Yeah. So I, I, I saw everybody. Rick Nelson came through. Fats <laughs> Domino came through. You know. And, yeah. Uh, so that was a and big thrill for me. Yeah. It is thrill when somebody, you know, when for some reason geography puts you in that sweet spot. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It really is. So they, it was quite an adventure in Klamath Falls, Oregon. Yeah, and I don't know why that stuck because I'd never heard of the town, but I always remember you got to drive. I, I almost climbed to the top of Mount Shasta as a stunt. While as I was a the, stunt? I was going to have a race with another guy to the top of Mount Shasta. And so then I go to Mount Shasta to, to kind of suss the thing out. And I find this guy, they say, well, if you want to go to the top of Mount Shasta, this is the guy to talk to. So I find this guy and say, I'm going to go to the top of Mount Shasta. We're having a race to the top. He said, do you know how difficult it is to get to the top of Mount Shasta? I said, we have a race every year that goes up there, and they go up there and come back, and there's a winner, right? And he said, yeah. Have you seen these guys? You're not <laughs> one of them. <laughs> but I couldn't call off the stunt, so we did it. But I only got—I got within 300 feet of the top. That's not bad. Say, well, not people, well, people would say, "Why didn't you go the other 300 feet?" But the problem is, to go the other 300 feet would take another hour or two, uh, because yeah. at, up there it's like slow going. You know, the yeah. air is thin and uh, uh, the rocks a shale is what gets you. You know, you walk two mm. steps and go back three. It's really amazing. But yeah. that was my... Well, I, love, 
that yeah that was your so i'm impressed that you almost did that i am too <laughs> but, i am too yeah. and stories i love movies i love books about failed expeditions it's like oh and here's where things went awry well and it, it was close to that with my trip to the top of mount shasta because we had to turn around and go back while there was still time to get back because the sun was going down. so Right, which is a big concern. I mean, it's because with we, every degree... I, I, mean, I ran down Mount Shasta so fast I had foot marks on my butt from running. <laughs> you know. Hey, listen, we've run out of time here, dear. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, where did it go? Uh, yeah, where does time go? Can I, will you do this with me next week? I would love to. Ladies and gentlemen, Lori Thompson. Thank you, Lori. My pleasure. Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that's our old friend, Lori Thompson. Oh, wait a minute. Let me turn on my lights here. There we go. Okay. I'm always forgetting something these days, and uh, I don't know why, but I do. So, anyway... Okay, are we all right? Are we okay? Are we uh, are we ready to go here? Okay, I think we are. Uh, it is uh, it is another week. Uh, it is another Wednesday, and uh, we do Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, as you know. Uh, and uh, we uh, talk to people. We do a little citizen panel thing, and people get to talk to me and talk to each other, and so uh, uh, you know. Um, I have a couple of people waiting, just a couple right now. So, But uh, let me see here. Anything you want to talk about? No, nah, I haven't got much to talk about. You know, I think about things that I want to talk about, and then I decide that, eh, I don't want to talk. Okay, so anyway, at the beginning, I had trouble with my audio again because I have buttons here I have to push, and I have to get them just right, and I don't understand it, and just, you know. So, anyway, I'm, I'm kind of like Jeff trying to do the show now. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, everybody, start calling. Start calling. I'm going to let these people on right now. Uh, Charlie Wallace is uh, coming on, and uh, Josh Wheeler is joining us uh, tonight. Hello there, Josh. Hello uh, to um, uh, Charlie. Uh, when Charlie's connecting his audio, it takes his audio a while, I think, to connect or something. It, it, uh, there you go. There's Charlie's audio. Okay. What does it take? It does it take time to connect? Yeah, because there's a delay. By the time you say, "Hey, I'm call," I'm 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 starting to call in, and I already click. You've already been on for thirty seconds. Oh, I see. Okay, so that's the reason why. All right, let me see here. Let me admit uh, uh, Alan, um, Alan here. Okay, all right. Hello to Alan. Okay, hello and hello to Josh. How are you, Josh? Good, how you doing? Seems Good. like just the other day I was talking to you. Uh, that's because <laughs> you were. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what were we talking about? You know, some, one of these nights we should just put that thing on the air. I, I, the only reason why we don't is because we decided a long time ago that we get together on Saturday nights and we, about every other Saturday night, and it's Patrick and it's Kevin and myself, and we all get together and uh, we just talk about stuff. But we decided that we're not going to put these things on the air or on the internet. Because, well, you give them the reason why, Josh. Well, sometimes we say things that we might not want the general public to hear that we said. <laughs> yes, right. There is a kind of uh, uh, censorship you automatically put on yourself, you know? Yes. Speaking like, of... I, I'm perfectly yeah. fine making fun of Patrick right now for everyone to hear, for example. But when I make fun of Charlie, I prefer that to be Trump. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When we talk smack about Alan, we'd rather do that. Yeah, 
and yeah, uh, yeah. and Tommy and Gucci I, we never talk about, right? So. But never, it's never. Really, and no. and uh, I should say that when I came on, you were just had yourself on the screen. You oh, didn't okay, have I know I haven't done it yet. There we uh, go. Uh, now, occasionally, I, uh, thank one you, of us, Tom. Uh, me, whoever, will give an opinion uh, or statement that you know, frankly, in this world. Um, you know, could get someone fired from their job or something. In and this that, day and age, absolutely. People, yeah. And that's not to make people think that it's like racist or, I mean, it's nothing like that, but I mean, people are very sensitive. And if you just say something that someone said offended them, um, you know, some people will track down where you work. I mean, you know, just a whole yeah. deal yeah. that uh, the four of us would rather not mess with that's all so we just have a private conversation basically yeah right yeah. i mean that's what i'm saying it's not like like racist things or gender things or i mean it's not like it's not like that i mean but it's just you know I occasionally would... uh you know you say something that might bother somebody well some of the stuff we we do talk about makes yeah. for a pretty good show right you know yeah. so yeah and... yeah i mean you know and and i you know, can go up to a point, but, you know, but, you know, you take myself, for example, look, I work for a large company and, um, you know, even though this is my private time and my private business and yeah, we all that, it just doesn't, you know, <laughs> doesn't seem to matter. And, well, you know, well, and, we, you know we, like we, I told you guys too, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to complete some work at a large university that I will not name um, to finish out a, a doctorate, a PhD. Oh, and sometimes I say things on here that certain people at that university, and since I think I told you the name of it, you probably know why, would not take the right way maybe. And, you know, all it takes is for someone to you know, send emails there and whine and cry. And all of a sudden, well, you know, I don't know you know, why any, let you finish I, your doctor. I, I don't know why anybody at Harvard would really care about this. Right. But. <laughs> yeah. but, you know, I mean, I, it's I, true I, though. I, by know, the way, I, mean, I don't remember what the school was you mentioned. Yeah. I'll tell you but, later. But, but, uh, I hope it's not Harvard. <laughs> no, it's not. It's, but you know, the, the problem with it is, is that it's, it's a it's it's private and it's big everyone would have heard of it um but it is privately run and that's not the university of phoenix is it uh no <laughs> absolutely oh, okay. it is not uh no a lot of those places don't do doctorates actually yeah. um you but it is a large university but it just it has a value system it's a christian college i can say that but i mean yeah. you know yeah um, is it, it Bob Jones? Be, but, <laughs> Is it Bob, uh, Bob Jones, Jones University? <laughs> no, no, it's not like that. But I mean, uh, I, 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 was, I, I did my yeah. undergraduate at a Christian college here at Ohio, a pretty big one. You know, when I went on campus and everything, again because it worked for me, because it the system worked, the courses worked, the times, and it's the same thing here. But hey, when I went there, you know, they were fairly serious about you know i mean i'm just saying that's all you know mm -hmm. if someone calls in there and says you know this that and the other i mean and it's not like i mean you know 15 years ago you know if you beat your wife up and got a dui you know they would throw you out of college but the now only, it's like the only you shame said something and the, people the, don't agree and you're the, out the only shame about people not hearing our discussions is some of them are pretty damn good yeah right you know they're really good uh but unfortunately uh as you say i mean all th I think four of us feel that it's it's our time that we can say just about anything we want to. Yeah. And sometimes we'll be saying something in humor and, you know, whatever. Yes, Alan. Well, all right. Yeah. yeah. Are we going to have to call you Dr. Josh after you get your doctor? <laughs> I guess that's up to you. But, you know, it's just that, I mean, you know, the thing is, is I don't have a job to the point where if I'm canceled, I have, you know, millions. I'm not a sports broadcaster. You know, yeah. I mean, these people can get canceled and for whatever it is, it's fine. But they have a millions of dollar bank account and they're fine. I'm not in that spot, you know. Like I'm, Alex Bennett did while he was in Miami. 
Yeah. I mean, I have to, I have to work. So part of life, whether you like it or not, is adapting to things so that you can keep your career and your, you know, you know we, we, we talk about this being a time where you might say something that uh, causes a problem. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, but you know, it, we and we think this is something new, but it really isn't if you think about it. I mean, yeah. if you were a communist in the '30s, it came back to yeah. haunt you in the in the '50s. Yeah. In the '50s, yeah. yeah, yeah, you know. I mean, and, and quite frankly, what somebody did 30 years earlier, previous uh, or 20 years previous, it really shouldn't be held against them. I mean, come on, fall a youth is uh, is. Uh, the ability to commit erroneous errors and not have to pay for them, you know. Well, you look at Oppenheimer. What? I think the country. I think that Oppenheimer, the guy that on the Manhattan Project, I, I think that he was wrongfully accused, and uh, they took his security clearance. And I think. Yeah, it was a whole political thing. Again, you know, but I mean, you know, I was thinking about this yesterday. I was doing all, I was going to do a whole just piece on this on, on the internet and just run it. Uh, but I was thinking this morning as I was in the wafting in and out of sleep that uh, it is just, it's gotten a bit out of, out of hand what's going on. They're making a big deal out of the fact that Kamala Harris is a socialist. Now, granted, she isn't a socialist. You know, I only wish that she were, okay? But she isn't. Um, uh, basically, I'm a socialist. You know, I, I believe in socialistic values. But I thought about it, and I went, what's so wrong with socialism? Nothing. Nothing. All it is is a method of saying, hey... You know, the rich have a duty to take care of those that don't have as much as they have. And they, their job, they can contribute to this country in ways that the, the, uh, the uh, well, the, uh, I hate to use the term poor because we, you're not really talking poor, but the uh, people without a lot of money can't do. Uh, and uh, they should pay their fair share of taking care of the rest of us. Uh, you know, <laughs> does that make sense? You know, because they, they, they God knows they've, they've reaped the benefits of this country, but they yeah. just never reap them like the people who are the working class. And so these, you know, these, these people who make billions of dollars who wind up paying 50 cents in tax every year, you know, I mean, shouldn't they be have to put out a nice chunk of change to take care of the other half? Or should we also say the other 92%? Yeah. Yeah. You know? That's uh, a political yeah. system, um, an economic system, you know, sort of combined a lot. And it's perfectly right. acceptable to have that philosophy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tom yeah. Yamaguchi raised his hand. Yes, Tom. <laughs> Well, let me give a slightly different take on this. I mean, the Republican Party being drowned, dragged down by Trumpism has just become so silly. And and the fact that anything to the, the left of Milton Friedman is, is uh, you know, is, is socialism and communism, at a certain point, then, then the whole argument is just erased. I mean, you know... Uh, Anything can be socialism, and when you think of it, well, well, public schools that's socialism, well, I, my, the fire department my, socialism. Yeah. So it, it, the whole meet, the whole argument just loses any meaning it's at, at all, and and just exposes uh, the, the the right way of the, or as I said, the Trump wing of the but Republican yet, Party, yet, as yet, I said, none, dragging it down yeah. for for what it is. It's a fraud. None of these people though, that's running. Outside of Bernie Sanders, who we know is a socialist, is a socialist. and a yes, proclaimed a socialist, socialist, never say there's nothing wrong with sh socialism. Just stand up and just say there's nothing wrong with yeah. socialism. It's yeah, simply it's like when they made liberal a back w bad word. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's nothing well, wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah, that goes back to uh, you well, know the Duke Gingrich era. 
you know. Well, I mean, when you've got somebody like Donald Trump going out and saying uh, to the uh, rest of the public that uh, it's uh, terrible what's been been happening with uh, with Kamala because Kamala is a communist, and I'm going. Isn't that like something you said 50, uh, 20, 30 years ago? You know, what's the big deal? Who cares if somebody's a communist or not a communist? Well, his, a lot of his entire playbook is based on decades old, Yeah, you know, nonsense like that. I mean, you know, uh, immigration and, you know, I mean, you know, the whole playbook. Really I mean, is, even, even Putin isn't a communist well, anymore, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, a lot, you know. KGB. <laughs> He's just KGB. He wasn't communist. Right. <laughs> I mean, uh, but, you know, totalitarianism is certainly making a comeback in this post-World War II world. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I think, you know, uh, a lot of it was brought down in that era and things changed uh, for the better for at least try to for a long time, but it's also, it's certainly making a comeback and, you know, people like Trump, uh, not really doing anything to oppose it, but rather the opposite, um, you know, is not helping the cause of democracy and freedom, loving, supporting people everywhere. Right. You know, I mean, it's, it's counterproductive to that, you know, which is why four years of him is, you know, so dangerous because four years is a long time for people like that to get ahead. Well, all I know is if I if I had several billion dollars, I wouldn't mind paying a huge chunk of that to yeah. the rest of the people who don't have the billion dollars. You know, yeah. but if I if I let's say I take a billion dollars and I give it to them, I've still got a billion left. How yeah. much money do I need? And that money will help to support the rest of the country and make the rest of the country stronger. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I, you know, and I, I certainly am supportive of, you know, the element that, you know, people in those positions often worked very hard and took risk and sacrificed things and deserved and so on and so forth. And, and it is all fine. But, you know, those opportunities to, to do that were made possible by, number one, the, the where they live, the government and, and, and the system that, of government that we have and where we live and our freedoms – and all the people around them and, and the infrastructures of, you know, their local areas. and I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's it's well, I mean, uh, it's uh, all tied uh, together, so much, they do how, owe something. How much money do you have to have? I mean, uh, yeah. Elon Musk is worth something like $200 billion. Okay, let's mm -hmm. just say that arbitrarily. Does he need that? Does he really need all that money? I mean, the only guy who's ever been decent about, really decent about this was the Sage of Omaha. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett. Yeah. Right. Who, who said, you know, I'm giving away most of my money because I'm never going to use this, and it should go yeah. to something good. Right. I, I, do think, I do think that Bill Gates uh, does quite a yeah. lot, and, and the, his yeah. foundation, uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, or, you know, whatever it's called now, um, <laughs> They have a lot of social programs. The Bill and X Wife Foundation. Yeah, right. I mean, they <laughs> they have a lot of social programs that. Oh, they've been uh, wonderful. Paid for. They've been wonderful. Yeah, right. but you know, I mean, but that's that's what you do. I mean, if you've got, you know, you've got, if you let's say you have, as Elon Musk does, two hundred billion dollars. You know, you didn't get it just by being wonderful. People mm -hmm. bought your cars. People paid you money for stuff. And, you and got he to inherited it. Huh? He inherited a lot of Did it. Did he inherit it? Father. I didn't. Yeah. The diamond mines or something, yeah. Yeah, his father, you know, people like, like Trump and, and, and Musk, these are people that have, have, have you know, gotten uh, inherited wealth and they're coming they're complaining about, about, oh, I earned this. No, you didn't earn it. You... <laughs> no, actually, in Trump's case, he can say, I, 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 I uh, uh, oh, inherited this money and, stole and, fair and, 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 and managed to lose it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, right. Six yeah, I mean, and by the way, they took a poll the other day and they found out that people like Trump like Trump because they think he's good with the economy. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, he isn't that's, good with I mean, his look, own economy. Huh? 
But, you know, that is slipping. I mean, latest polling out this morning has his lead on who handles the economy better over Harris down to him only having like a three point lead. You know, it was like 17 points over Biden, you know, not that long ago. Uh, she's closed the immigration question down to uh, three points as well. You know, and, you know, then when you flip to some other areas, trustworthy, approval, um, uh, likability, you know, she's winning. <laughs> likability. So, What's well, that? Uh, look. Likeability. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it just I mean, to... so I guess what I'm saying is, is it is slowly eroding as people get an opportunity to have an alternative that's more palatable for them, you know, other than a very old Joe Biden, you know, mm -hmm. who still offered the same policies. And that's, I mean, a lot of, you're right, but the optics of it, um, and in some cases, the reality of it, uh, you know, cause he is elderly and he doesn't get around well and things like that. I mean, it was hurting very badly and yeah. uh, she has been able to close the gap on areas like immigration and on areas like the economy. And in and, some cases, the reality of it, hmm. uh, you know, because he is elderly and me. he doesn't get around well and things like that. I mean, it was hurting very badly. And uh, she has been able to... But, uh, you know, I guess what I was saying was that what's so striking about that is that these are the... These are the main tenants of the Republicans reelection campaigns. These mm -hmm. were the things that were going to get them reelected was inflation, immigration, and, uh, you know, the economy. And now they are not really winning on those areas anymore. I mean, she's bringing it so close it's within the margin of error. They can't turn to their tried and to abortion. Because that is hurting them there. I mean, they, now they're to the point where they don't even want to talk about it. Right. Yeah. So they can't turn to that. So what are they turning now? So now they're just turning to, you know, what's the new term, that the, what's the, new term the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Democrats have come up with for being pro-abortion. Uh, and I'm trying to remember what the term is. I saw it yesterday and I thought it was just brilliant. Anti-baby. No, no, it's not anti-baby. No, it, it's uh, something. Oh, God. I'm trying to remember what it was. But they're not using the term uh, pro-life any longer. Mm. Or, or rather, uh, pro-choice. Uh, pro no, no, but they've gone away from pro-choice to is another it, term. which Is, is it on, based on freedom? It, it's, <laughs> it's on all their buses now. That uh, are going yeah, around. I don't know. I mean, they framed it in like a pro-health care type yeah. of Make well, your own freedom. in free, yeah. freedom. You know, that, that's their uh, cool slogan: freedom. Freedom, freedom. That yeah. was it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's look. We've talked about this for a decade or more. Uh, I've never understood why they didn't do this earlier. It's high yeah. time Democrats started talking about patriotism and freedom because they are the ones who have allowed the Republicans to have, mm -hmm. you know, a hold on this. I mean. Democrats are for an expansion of freedom far more than I think the Republican Party is, as they mm -hmm. currently stand, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Democrats do not want to make nonsense laws about things that Republicans used to argue should have been localized. Well, I, you know, I always you know, seem book to remember... Ban, from book bans to abortion. If, you I, know? if I remember the, the, the Republicans, if they ever had a stance on stuff, you could count on them for going on the side of a personal choice... Yeah, and things like that, and all of a sudden they're they've gone a hundred percent the other way. Right. Trump, it's all Trump. It's all yeah. Trump. Yeah, they want to right. go yeah. to the Handmaid's Tale. Yeah, <laughs> they control everything. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, Alan. You know something that you know that you know Trump is uh, using Elon Musk as as one of his names that supports him and so would support everybody out there. That's all good and fine, but the unions are not going to back Trump because Elon Musk is anti-union. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, but who, knows, who knows why people believe right. any of these things? I mean, I'm I'm just amazed that, uh, that that Trump even has a following at this point. I mean, I can't even imagine even the stupidest person in America finding him a good <laughs> idea. 
You know, he's insulted just about everybody in the country. What are you going to yep. say, Charlie? Yeah, their hand kind well, of. Well, they had the. Um, we keep talking about how inflation's so bad. There was one policy that Trump has been trumpeting for the last month or two. He wants to change everything to tariffs. He wants to replace income tax with tariffs. That's going to be a huge inflation. He still thinks the other country pays for the tariffs. But it's the people here to pay more for stuff because of the tariffs. Well, and the tariff is high. You know what? I, I can, Let me tell you something. And I don't know where this came from. Uh, but I had, uh, I had uh, Marjorie has it over here. Um, we got a bill for the plane trip to Paris. And for the two of us, it comes to about... Something like three thousand dollars, or something like that, three and a half thousand hmm. dollars. But the trip itself, the actual airfare, is only <laughs> seven hundred and twenty. And I no. looked at I wait a minute, I yes, and I it's looked at wait a minute. Hold right. on a second. Let me go over here. I'll get it for you. I'll get it for you so that I can, <laughs> I can. Um, we're talking about those fees that uh, uh, that Biden is see. talking about. Uh, hold on. Mm, yeah. The fees, the tack on the fees. Yeah. Probably yeah. a baggage, probably baggage fee. Probably uh and handrails. Uh, so you're tripping you're, yeah, service <laughs> fees, right? Is that what you're getting at, Alex? No, no, you're gonna love this. What? Is that what you're we're talking about fees, right? They they got all these fees like baggage fees and stuff like that. Try this on, okay. The actual flight, the uh US um the uh, um Airfare is seven hundred and seventy-six dollars. Okay, that's round trip. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. Uh, uh, total per passenger. Yeah, uh, seven hundred seventy-six. So it would be, I don't know, 14, 14 something. Anyway, anyway, as I go down the list here, all of a sudden I go to international surcharge. <laughs> Eight hundred and fifty dollars. Holy moly! Now what the hell is that? <laughs> They're charging me because I'm going to another country. I what? guess so. <laughs> I guess. That's what it sounds like. And yeah. then I looked it up somewhere, and I couldn't get a straight reading on it online. Uh, you know, they have the, the France passenger service charge of $35. Okay, I understand that, you know, whatever. But just this, this, uh, 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 and there's a France airport tax of $24, but an international surcharge of $850 when the flight is only $776. Mm -hmm. Tell me what that's all about. I know. Maybe you should call the airline and ask them. Well, yes, that's absolutely. I'm call, we're ask calling the airline our, what it is. We're calling our travel agent about that. But geez, Almighty, that is the most ridiculous thing I've heard in my life. You know, and I'd that's like more to than the airfare. What? That's more than the cost of the airfare. It's more than right. the cost of the airfare. Now, I mean, there are a lot of other things. There's a U.S. immigration uh, user fee. Uh, U.S. passenger facility charge, but these are like seven dollars, four fifty, six dollars, six ninety-seven, eight eighty-three. It's, it's, it's you like know. when you rent a car in this country, you you pay yeah. twenty-seven dollars a day, and then tax, 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 airport, city, this tax, that tax. Yeah. It you know even before you get your insurance. Let me give well, the Biden, to... Biden administration has really been cracking down on these fees, and that I can understand why, because it's yeah. very deceptive. You know, they'll say, well, this is your price, but then when they add all the fees, <laughs> yeah. you, you, you can have double of of what uh, your original cost was, even more. Yeah, but I just, I, you know, it just it makes no sense to me, you know? I mean, when I used to take a trip to Europe, uh, hey, it's a it's five hundred dollars round trip. Okay, thank you very much. I've got my my I'll pay that right. But they never stuck on all these other surtaxes and things like that. And it seems like that tax, the international tax, doesn't look or surcharge doesn't look like it's a surcharge 
uh, that uh, the uh, French government is charging us. It's not a surcharge. I think it's a surcharge that the airline is, is charging us. Well, and then probably. when I looked it up, it said, well, that's for, uh, that's for gas. That's for fuel. <laughs> Make that part of the ticket, you know. <laughs> Your ticket price ought to include the fuel. Yeah, I mean, that's, but, you know, almost Wasn't everyone Wasn't that has part of the job things. of the airline yeah, in the <laughs> old days? That's part of the trip is the gas thing. <laughs> well, you, you know, you can have it with or without fuel if you want. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you were planning on actually have, taking off and, and getting into the air? <laughs> oh, we didn't know you wanted to do that. Jeez, <laughs> almighty, you know. But I mean... Yeah, they're, yeah. Huh? I mean, everyone has these things now. They're forcing you to try to spend more money with them, you know. I mean, yeah. everything has these. I mean, if you go to... You go to the fanatics now to buy a shirt for your favorite team. Uh, they, they For the last couple, three years, they charge a $3 processing fee. Yeah. To what? Process my order? That's your job, you know? So if you're going to go buy a shirt, you might as well buy two shirts because you only got to pay the fee once. Oh, but if you yeah, buy a shirt yeah. on Monday and a shirt on Friday, you got to pay it twice. You know, yeah. the, another problem was today I uh, I ordered, I we've been ordering from this chocolate company called chocolate.com, mm -hmm. which is, the chocolate is really good. It's <laughs> really great chocolate. And I like these gummy bears, these chocolate covered gummy bears. They have, wow. which are just, you know, killer. All right, they're eighteen bucks a piece uh, for Whoa. a box of them. Okay, that's pretty pricey, you know. Yeah. But then I do three of them, so now it's up to fifty-six dollars or something like that. Okay, all right, okay, I understand. All right, now they add on the perishable fee that they give you insurance against it melting. Wait a minute, isn't that your job to send me the chocolate in a way that it won't melt? And if you can't, then don't sell chocolate over the internet. All right? And then they charge you a processing fee of almost $10. So by the time I'm through, I'm buying three boxes of gummy, gummy bears, chocolate gummy bears. It's costing me 78 bucks. I mean, what? Everybody wants a little bit more than they want to get, you know? Yeah. And uh, I, I just, I, it bothers me. The other thing, well, about, what? What bothers me is these fees and these scams were made up, were thought up by people like Trump. Yeah. So what do we do? Well, let's send him to Washington to put him in charge. <laughs> well, I don't. Did he really come up with stuff like that? Because after no, all, no, no, I'm he saying was, he's he, a he, person who runs a large business. Yeah. yeah. And those are the type of people that do these things. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, the regular guy didn't say, "Man, I really wish I paid a fucking fee for something every time I did it." No. The people who thought that up were the people who run these large companies and corporations, you know? And he's in that class of people, if you ask me. At least he thinks he is. You know, he's a big businessman. You know, I mean, this is why I've always argued I don't think people who are good at running business or even sports organizations are good for politics because it's just leadership is not the same everywhere all the time, always, you know? Well, the there are different yeah. facets of leadership. The latest thing that's, that the, the, that's, the, that's the big that's the big myth that's been going around for a couple of decades. Is let's put him in charge because he's a good businessman. Like like he he's going to run the government like he, like he, like a business. But the government is not a business. Well, no, he, <laughs> he he's we're going to run it just like a business. He's going to burn it to the ground and get the insurance yeah. money. Yeah, you know, I mean, but uh. uh right. Uh, you know, uh, the other day, for instance, I get a thing here, and I, I like uh, Apple TV+. Plus. They've got some great programming, probably the best programming of any of these services for my money, okay? Uh, great shows. And uh, I love the channel. Uh, they were 69 bucks. I got a thing. It's going to be 99 now. They've jumped wow. to 30 bucks. Wow. You know, at least... You know, do it ten dollars a year or something, but you know, you really got to be greedy. This for a yeah, company, fifty percent raise. 
This is from a company that won't let me use my output from my old cameras to use the tapes onto uh, editing programs that I use. I mean, you know, they're 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 all they're they're all scum. Every last one of them. The latest scum I'm having trouble with is uh, YouTube. YouTube, get this. YouTube oh. sends me a thing that says, uh, uh, on this particular show, uh, we found that you were giving misleading information, medical information. And I just got this the other day. Another one? Yeah, another one. In wow. fact, another two. <laughs> another two. Now, uh, okay, if I'm giving misleading information, please call me on that so that I know. But don't send me a notification of something I ran three years ago. <laughs> I mean, yep. if there's some damage there, don't you think it's already been done? Yeah. You know? And then when I go to protest it, there's, I say, okay, I want to protest it. They go, okay, your protest has been lodged. But there's no place for me to put down why I'm protesting it. My argument back. There is no way to do that. Doesn't matter. The so then they send you a thing saying, "No, we looked at it again, and you're still, you know." And all it was, all we were just, I, I was just saying, in one case, go out and get a vaccination, you know, and the other one was you should wear a mask at all costs. I think it was a, it was a discussion I was having with Josh or somebody like that, you know. But I mean, it wasn't misinformation, mis medical misinformation was the information that everybody wanted you to get across to people. Wear a mask, well, get get the uh, get the vaccination. I wonder if the Republicans get stuff like that every day. You know when they when they put out misinformation over YouTube. Uh, I really don't know. I really don't know. I mean, I'm the little guy, so I think right. I probably get smacked more than somebody. If I were somebody who was say had uh, a million viewers a day or something like that. Do you think they'd tell do that to me? You don't? Uh, no. No, but if I had a million viewers, do you think they'd do that to me? No, they'd want the money. If I said, yeah. okay, you're going to do that to me, screw you, I'm going somewhere else to do this. Right. They, they, yeah, beg, they, me, let, they beg me to stay. They let Trump say whatever he wants and... Yep. You know, I mean, people listen to this Joe Rogan guy who I don't even really know who he is or what his deal is. But, I mean, he says, I mean, he lets people on there all the time. And I don't, I know that, like, he's not, YouTube isn't his employer or anything. But no, but, there are a lot of people but he like is, uh, he is being, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, he's a he, broadcaster. He's on he's Spotify. Paying. He's on right. Spotify. Yeah. They pay him a million dollars a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or his expert opinion. Yeah. He yeah. was just a comedian, wasn't he, before he got all famous? A game show host. Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, they're, they're allowing Trump to go around and say that, you know, in some states, even after the baby is born, you they, they're allowed to execute the baby. <laughs> he said that over and over again. Well, well, I mean, and the right. reporter just, I mean, doesn't say, and they don't, what state yeah, is that? What, what state and what law is that? The only, the <laughs> only, uh, uh, thing we've got to prevent people from from believing that and to question Donald Trump is the reporter who mm -hmm. doesn't say a thing to him right I mean what what state is that show show me that law yeah just let's, or, the, let's, or the school that sends the kid home with an operation <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh yeah yeah that was on yeah the, they're doing gender reassignment surgeries in school yeah, but that's what parents even you know, you about. send your kid to school yeah. and they come back a different <laughs> gender. That's right. <laughs> Only in Florida, though. How stupid. I mean, but but I mean, in in his case, who was the guy who was doing it? The guy over at Fox, uh, one of the um, lesser guys, not not you know. And he was interviewing him, and he says that, and the yeah. interviewer doesn't say a I mean, word. In uh, what state can the baby be born? And it's over there crying and they're doing their thing and you can be like hey, you know what this really ain't for me i wanted blue and eyes. they'll just be like okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? i mean i mean i i don't i mean i don't get what i mean you well, can't even do that on, I, you can't as, even do that on game of thrones without you know oh. 
getting executed. I mean, come on. As I have said over and over again, I'm all for retroactive abortion. <laughs> you know. And but, was, I mean, he well, says stuff like that, and I just don't. You know, I think that was tried, Alex. It didn't work. Yeah. It ended up with Trump. No, but the fact that he gets away with it and these reporters <laughs> never take him to task over it, or if they do, they only try twice. You know, they really? don't give up. They shouldn't give up. Is what they shouldn't do. You know. Yeah, but, if he's going to keep push, just this interview is over, and we're not having you on. You know. Well, a couple of month, a couple of weeks ago, I think you know, if you've been watching Fox at all lately, right? Some place they got a, well, they got a thing called Fox Now. And if when you watch Fox Now, you wouldn't think you were watching a Fox outlet. <laughs> because what they do is Fox Now is nothing but live broadcasts of speeches by everybody, by Trump, by you know, Kamala, by all the, every, everybody and maybe meetings and they had the other day I tuned it in and Biden was there doing a conference with uh, somebody about some Sounds like C-SPAN. Yeah, like C-SPAN. It's kind of like C-SPAN. Yeah. Yeah. Only it's Fox span. Uh, <laughs> and and also Fox is starting to question a lot of his stuff. The other day um uh after um I think it was was it the Democrat uh, her oh her speech Mm -hmm. uh, they had all some people on from Fox, and there was all a round table going on, and they had a pretty good, diverse uh, bunch of opinions. There were a couple of people there going, "Great speech by her, boy! That was one of the all-time great uh, uh, convention speeches," and so on. And a couple of them were the normal Fox people going, "Yeah, but she's a communist. How can you trust that?" <laughs> yeah, you know, I heard that, that kind of thing. And <laughs> then, and, and then. Uh, uh, and they said, well, on the line, we have Donald Trump. God. And I went, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. So he just started in for about two a minute or so, and I turned it off. Well, I wish I had kept it on, because it turns out that about five minutes in, they just shut him down. Oh, really? Yes. I can't take him anymore. They said to him, well, that's enough, Mr. Uh, Mr. President, or whatever they call him over there. <laughs> And they hung up on him, literally. Uh, they're, they're starting to feel that they have more of an obligation than they used to. And they also got sued, didn't they, for a long time? Yeah, yeah, but I don't... I, don't... I mean, that's got to have a little bit of effect, I think. Well, that didn't put the fear of God in them, because they I had mean, When I tell you, Alex, they're lying again, let's sue these guys. <laughs> Come yeah, on. Yeah, but I mean, it was... It, even Fox is starting to kind of lose their desire to go and kiss his ass. I mean, Hannity still does. And this guy the oh. other day, when he got into that. Is that you know, that Jesse the, Waters? I want to no, throw no, my no, shit no, at the no, TV. No, 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 no. This is the guy on the weekends. Just not, um, oh. you know. I'm trying to remember his name. Another guy. So Fox it. did this with him in 2020 when it became sort of obvious that. Uh, that Biden was going to win, they all of a sudden switched, the, changed their tune, so to speak, and started backing Biden and stayed away from Trump. No, they mm -hmm. weren't backing Biden. I don't remember Fox ever really? backing Biden. Never. I, okay, I how, think, about, uh, how about just staying away from Trump? I think Tony hit on the head. It was the Dominion voting systems that 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 really have yeah. influenced them <laughs> oh, yeah. well i think they, they lost a lot of money on that they're you know i can't remember the, the joke that uh that Barack, uh, obama told one time and he says all the all the uh, great news organizations are here we have uh abc which is owned by disney cap cities we have uh nbc which is owned by universal and and we have fox which is which is owned by dominion voting system <laughs> yeah that was good <laughs> that was a good one i, mean, yeah. uh, <laughs> I wonder who writes his material Alex, and we'll come up with that i think he's just a funny guy he's just yeah. good he's good when he delivers it that could be you're right that could be his own stuff because he's yeah. smart I, mean, I could see him doing that oh no he's very funny he's very funny and and yeah but the republicans had <laughs> pushed that amendment through back in the in the fifties. Uh, uh, Obama would still be president. <laughs> you know, can I ask you a question, Alex? Too. You know what I wish somebody would ask him a reporter, like uh, Mr. Trump, a former president. Do you still think?
think that uh, Barack Obama was not born in the United States? I would love to know his answer. He would dodge the question. He'd start talking about the economy or something. He would. Yeah, never I give all his lies right back at him, and I want him to answer something. Yeah. Well, I A mean, good interviewer would push him for the answer. You know, but what I don't like, I'll tell you what I don't like. I am, I, I kind of have to go along with uh, Elon Musk on this. Uh, I'm all for having a, a service which is an open forum and anybody can say anything they want to. And then it's the job of the other people who are going online and posting their stuff to challenge those, those, those questions. Uh, what I don't like is this thing where, you know, YouTube is telling me three years later <laughs> what is proper and what is improper about medical yeah. information. I will tell you right now, if back then I had gone on the air here and I had said that, well, I don't know if you have to wear a mask. I don't know if that's right. I wouldn't have said that because I was going along with the wearing mask thing. Okay, but today we kind of agree that maybe masks were an overkill. Yeah. You know, and uh, that's not misinformation today. So what's yesterday's misinformation, sure. according to YouTube, may not be today's misinformation. So, so three years ago, you know, there was a study done by the, the uh, National Institute of Health. And I guess this was done last year. I could I could probably find it. If I think I, I know what you're going to say. They, they claim that probably a million people were saved by masks alone when mm -hmm. COVID was out and there were no vaccines yet. Yeah, yeah I would I would agree with you on that one. At least that was a, a stopgap measure. Once the uh, once the uh, vaccine came out, I think that kind of was the game changer. You know. Well, actually, Paxlovid's a game changer because, I mean, the, the vaccine certainly was too, but Paxlovid, because that keeps you out of the hospital as a rule and away from death, but uh, Paxlovid will work on somebody that's been vaccinated or not vaccinated, and uh, most yeah, because people, people have people, no people who do have, um, I mean, it's not as deadly now, I don't believe. But uh, I'm not going. Right. I'm not going to say that because I don't want three years from now to get a note no, from, yeah. from YouTube. I, 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 I'll say it. I think it's not as deadly. Alex now. told me not to wear a mask, and now I'm dying. <laughs> well, it's not as deadly because more people have been vaccinated and so yeah. on. So that, but but still, I mean, I've gotten it three times. Yeah, I always used to wear it. Well, yeah, I know, and I've been vaccinated all along, and up until up until the vaccination came out, I never left the house. See what see what. Oh, what, what, the, what, what the government didn't tell people was they it kind of told the lie and Pfizer is getting sued for this by the uh, European Union. They said that if you get vaccinated, it'll stop you from it's 95 percent effective at stopping you from getting COVID. Vaccines were never developed to stop you from getting the disease. They're the, the vaccines were developed it. to stop you from um you know, becoming very sick and right. dying. Right. I mean, yeah. But, to build know, up your immune system. Like we, we, but all, we have 30, all I'm saying, all I'm from... saying is what is the truth, uh, what, what, some, what YouTube would suddenly say is irresponsible today, it will turn out five years down the line was not irresponsible. And some of the things that we accept as truth, we yep. will find was dangerous thinking. Yep. You know, so who are they to be the judges of what is good medicine or bad medicine? Are they doctors? No, they're a fucking company owned by Google, all right, mm -hmm. that uh, carries this program. And quite frankly, I wish I had the kind of money it takes to sue YouTube for this kind of action. But there's probably something in the contract I signed that said I can't even sue them. So, you know. Yeah, small print, yeah. Binding arbitration or something like that. Let's see if they censor this show because I'm saying nasty things about YouTube. <laughs> you know, but I mean, I just think that, uh, do, uh, do you agree with me, yeah, Tom, that, that, that if you're going to open these things to people to use, then you should be a, somewhat loose in your, in, in allowing them to say what they want to say given the fact that someone else has the ability to turn around and disagree with it? 
Well, I say every every platform has a right to 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 uh, make rules for its users. I mean, you know, as long as they're consistent, you know. But in my case, I consider the, it a, which is the issue. I I mean, you know, I'm not going to say that that you can't you can't for that you can't force a a a company like like uh, well or a, a platform like Google to to allow anybody to say anything. I mean that's that's kind of ridiculous. Well, but if you say something, then they then they should see it right away. Or I they, guess they, they should see yeah, it there right should away. Be, there should be there should be a a, 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 got, a cutoff date. Right. I, I got something from Facebook the other day, Alex. Five years ago, I posted something that doesn't meet their, you know, exactly. whatever thing. That's probably that's spam. spam. <laughs> no, but, but that's no, that's I, I, that's exactly, I get that all the time. That's exactly oh. what I'm saying about here. I mean, I don't mind right. if they tell me tomorrow, hey, yesterday on last night's show, you that's said right. something and it was dangerous, and so we're pulling the show down. And I go, okay, I understand. You know, I did right. something wrong, bad me. You know, but five, four, th three years ago? Yep. I mean, if the damage has been, if there was damage, which there wasn't, the damage has already been done. Right. And how dare you go back and pull something down? If you didn't catch it three years ago, the, yeah. it's your bad luck, not mine. Yep. I'll tell you, I'll tell you where the damage was done. And that was by Trump and an and administration at the beginning when, when the, we needed the most consistent message to come out of authorities and he was undercutting Fauci he was undercutting everybody right and and the communications were just absolutely hard and 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 as a result we had people that died that didn't need to die that's so right. that's what that's well, what, that's I, was, what I, was, I, I was literally running a, a an ad here for responsible responsibility during the uh, during COVID. Yeah. You may remember I read for masking, that. and you may remember I always told people you don't say that because you can't say that, and I was always very very religious about it. And uh, for them to suddenly say that, uh, you know, and the three years ago thing is what gets me because if it was dangerous, okay, let me know and I'll stop doing it. But don't tell me three years later, you know. So. Oh. So, you know, all you got to do is go back 100 years in history and before we had vaccines and look at the uh, the Spanish-American flu or the flu of 1917, 18, and 19. How did that go away? It didn't just go away on its own. People stopped transmitting it because they wore masks. Mm -hmm. Health departments, actually one of the first in the country. Was that was the last so. time they were all wearing masks in this country. Yeah. They made, you had to make your own masks and stuff like they did with cloth and stuff. And people, once they found that, you know, you could stop a lot of the airborne stuff from reaching the next person, it, it stops replicating. What's interesting about the Spanish <laughs> flu, yeah. this is this is the irony of the Spanish flu. Um, is that it um, It went away during the middle of World War II because it got so I mean, prevalent. World War I. Uh, World, World, World War I, I, rather. It got I. so prevalent that uh, they just pulled all their troops off the front lines, and they yeah. just stopped the war for a while because of, of the Spanish flu. Well, all of a sudden, things got better because people weren't giving each other the Spanish flu. And when they all got better, we continued with the war again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was so insane, you know? Yep. But all I'm saying to, to YouTube is, you know, if you're going to go and you're going to be assiduous about things like that, then get them right. Don't just send a... Uh, a, 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 a an algorithm searching around the web for all the things that have been wrong three years ago. You know, find something that happened yesterday. Find the lies that Donald Trump tells. So but they know, don't do you know, any of that. You know, you know, Tom, you said you get these these things that they, where they tell you five years earlier all the time. Well, you know, I don't I don't get. It's only the second one I ever got, but I don't respond to him. Yeah. Yeah, I just, they're all good there's, about no, there's no response. Well, you can't, in the first you can't, place they thought you, yeah. uh, you know, you respond. They're going to say sorry. You're still wrong. Uh, you, like, can't, you, you can't. You can't. Re, you can't get. There's nobody to get a hold of at YouTube. No. 
That's there right. is find me an address that I can write to to explain my problem. Yep. And get a reply, by the way. Oh, they were they had a, they were rather based or had a big office here in the Bay Area, and a couple of years ago, some nut went on a shooting spree there. Well, no, when they st when they started out, they all wanted to talk to you. Hell, they they had uh, you could call a phone number. Yeah. And you could complain about their service or whatever. Try with any of these companies to find <laughs> a phone number now. Yeah. It's almost impossible. You know. you know, when you call your airline to find out what this fee is, they'll probably charge you another fee to tell you. I heard yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> isn't, isn't that bizarre? Isn't it, it is. Bizarre? It's more than your... I could see a tax on this whole package of $100 yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's part of the fuel surcharge... Do you get a meal on the plane at least? Say it's fuel surcharge. Don't come up with one of these... I don't know what it is. I'm having her get a hold of our travel agent. Yep. This is this is that's that's absolutely ridiculous, you know. But I gotta pay it. You know, I wanna go to get France. I gotta pay it, but I wanna know why I'm paying it. And you better get a meal on this plane for all that extra search. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you no, get no, a no. meal on the plane anymore. Did they give you a meal, a snack, or something for like a six? You got a six hour flight. Yeah, for a long trip. I'm going. I'm going premium coach. Oh, so you definitely get a meal. Like in Seinfeld, remember Jerry got the meal in the front? It comes from 7-Eleven. It's a day-old thing. And a Slurpee. And, you, and the seat will recline out. You can take a nice nap then probably. God, I hate when the turbulence happened. You get Slurpees all over the place. Well, I was going to I was, I was gonna go, um, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, not, uh, not, uh, not first class, but the other one. Uh, Business class. Business class, but the cost was. I, I got the money, but I didn't want to pay that kind of money to travel. Well, if you're traveling for five hours, okay, do you really want to pay three thousand no, dollars? No, that's seat? a lot. I thought it was you know, come on, you know. And I told Marjorie, I said I'm willing to forget about even the premium coach, you know, that's crazy. because uh, I don't, you know, it's, it's only it's only five hours. She, well, my yeah. back hurts me when I travel. I Oh, okay. Not really. All right, yeah. but if a back is going to be bad, then maybe it might be worth it then. Yeah, well, I won't be able to walk, I, so, I you know. New York, <laughs> like a I, <laughs> you need a massage on the plane, so don't bring them off there. When I flew to New York, <laughs> I flew business class. <laughs> yeah. I flew to New York in 1999, I flew business class, and there was nobody in first class, so they just bumped me up and I got first oh, class service. Uh, one time I got it, it, one time I got into a fight with the airline. Uh, I and Deborah Winger, she and I were protesting. Oh, no I didn't way, find dude. out it was her till later on, and it wound up in Herb Kane's column in the San oh, Francisco man. Chronicle. <laughs> and and uh, we were we were so pissed off that the air. This is a time when the airlines and planes were taking off. You know, really? seven hours later and so on. <laughs> yeah. And then nobody would talk to you. So she and I were. We want to talk to the blah, blah, blah. And we were protesting yeah. like crazy. Mm -hmm. And we were making a lot of noise and so on. And finally, they put us on the plane. And I'm still mad as hell and pissing vinegar and all of that. And they said, if you don't shut up, we're going to put you in first class. <laughs> Can I go with you? And I thought for a moment, and I went, okay, fuck you. And they put me in first class. <laughs> we get a meal too up here, I bet you. Hey, I've just noticed we kind of run out of time here. Hold on a second. Let me start playing the theme. Oh, boy. Well, anyway. Hey, good, good group of people here tonight. Nice time. Really nice time. Appreciate it all. I lo always love having you here. Uh, 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 Tom, because uh, it's just, you know, it's like old times. It's like old mm -hmm. times. Like uh, the quake. Yes. <laughs> uh, Charlie, thank you so much for joining us tonight, and thank you too as well to Alan and to Josh. I know you were getting a little drowsy there, but thanks for sticking with us. Good. And finally, thanks to Tony. Everybody, give a big wave yeah, goodbye, yeah. and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. And say a big, you know, good night. There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. We'll have one again tomorrow night. The next is uh, uh, Amy Manuel. She's here with the intersection. 
She'll be taking your calls at on, on um, uh, Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, of course, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.